Welcome back everyone. Here is the best Dolphins news and YouTube. Miami Dolphins signed veteran lineman DJ Fluker. ESPN predict the Dolphins' total win in 2021 season. Miami Dolphin pressure at 18th pick. Five biggest question with Miami Dolphins' number one quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. Miami Dolphins and the return of Preston William. Let's subscribe. Miami Dolphins signed veteran lineman DJ Fluker. If you couldn't tell by now, the Miami Dolphins are serious about getting themselves depth and competition along the offensive line. Miami has been persistent in their efforts to introduce new blood into a unit that has served as a sore spot for the team for quite some time, even going back to when the team still had Laramie Tunsil secured as the team's left tackle. Miami invested early and often up front with their 2020 NFL draft selections and returned to the well in free agency again this offseason with the addition of former Ravens center Matt Skura. Miami is now tapping into the Baltimore pipeline once again, with veteran offensive lineman DJ Fluker announcing on Instagram that he's signed with the Dolphins. Fluker played last season in Baltimore and started eight games for the Ravens, taking 52% of the team's offensive snaps in his only season with the team. Beyond experience on the field, 59 career starts, Fluker has the potential to serve as of starts, Fluker has the potential to serve as a viable mentor to young linemen such as Robert Hunt and Solomon Kindley, Flucker's style of play meshes with the strengths of both 2020 rookies on the right side of Miami's line. And given that Fluker, like fellow interior lineman Eric Flowers, has taken starts at both guard and tackle, Miami will be expanding their potential offensive line combinations for the fall with this latest addition. Listed at 342 pounds, Fluker is yet another heavyweight lineman to step into the fray for Miami. Flowers, who overlapped with Fluker in New York with the Giants previously, also tips the scales in excess of 340 pounds and Kindley is listed on the roster at 339 pounds. Miami's brand up front is becoming quite clear. They want the biggest and meanest road graders they can find, so account for that when assessing which 2021 NFL draft prospects will fit best with the Dolphins in next week's big event. Would you love this movement? ESPN predict the Dolphins' total win in 2021 season. The Miami Dolphins are hoping to make what transpired in 2020 the new normal. No, not missing the playoffs, Miami has done plenty enough of that over the past decade but a double-digit win season? Miami has had just two of those in the last 12 seasons. And yet in year two of a sizable rebuilding effort, Miami took a major leap forward in their play and logged 10 wins by week 16 before promptly running out of gas in week 17 and finishing the season at 10-6. The good news? 10 win seasons should be easier to come by going forward. The NFL has added a 17th game to the schedule effective immediately. But the question for Miami is can the team do what none of the other Dolphins teams of the past 15 years have been able to do? String winning seasons together and create a higher standard for the club? ESPN seems to think so. Dolphins beat reporter Cameron Wolf picked Miami to repeat a 10-win season yet again in 2021 recently as part of a league-wide set of predictions. I expect the Dolphins to match their 10-win total from 2020, considering they have an extra game in which to do it. Miami played more rookies than any other team in 2020, including QB Tua Tungavailoa and three starting offensive linemen, so natural development in the signing of free agent receiver Will Fuller V should make that group better. The strength of this team, a number 5 ranked defense, largely remains intact, and the Dolphins return 19 of 22 total starters to couple with two upcoming first-round picks. Cameron Wolf, ESPN The fine print for Wolf's prediction is clear. Miami owns two first-round draft choices. And if the team crushes those picks, another 10-win season feels easily attainable. But if Miami makes poor decisions with those early choices, it may be difficult to see the Dolphins climb back into the playoff race into the playoff race amid a rapidly improving AFC conference picture. So, what about your prediction? How many victories will the Dolphins have in 2021 season? Miami Dolphin pressure at 18th pick. First thing first. Take everything you see and read as reports at face value at this time of year. The dynamics of the NFL draft will lead to plenty of misinformation and gamesmanship among teams through sources in the media. The objective is simple. Keep the other teams guessing. 
And while the Miami Dolphins are among the teams who are typically effective at smokescreening the competition, the team still undeniably has a type and it hasn't been a surprise to see what direction the Dolphins have gone early in each of the last two NFL drafts, at least in the top 20. Miami has two more top 20 selections awaiting them next Thursday. And while the team may ideally seek to optimize the value of both selections, pressure from other teams in the queue may force Miami to take advantage of their proverbial high ground if they feel they have to have a player at a specific position. Take Alabama running back Najee Harris for example. By most accounts, drafting Harris at number in Harris at number 18 overall is a bit rich for the price of a running back these days. But reports exist tying the Pittsburgh Steelers heavily to Harris, which will loom large in the minds of the Dolphins when they come on the clock. The latest comes from Jerry Delac of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, who reports that Pittsburgh expects to add a feature running back by no later than the second round, but most likely in the first round. Meanwhile, Harris spoke with ESPN's Adam Schefter on Schefter's podcast and spoke glowingly about his interview with Pittsburgh in the pre-draft process. Perhaps this is all means to be smoke, pushing a player Pittsburgh really wants into their laps if they can coax Miami to go a different direction. But the knowledge of Pittsburgh's rumored interest will undoubtedly be lingering in Miami's minds when they come on the clock with the number 18 overall selection next Thursday. We'll see if the pressure gets to Chris Greer and company or if the Dolphins decide to roll the dice. Could Pittsburgh draft Harris? What should Miami do- Five question with Miami Dolphins number one quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. The questions ranged from a projection on his 2021 season to what would benefit most in the NFL draft. Here we go. 1. Is Tua healthy? Like Alabama healthy? Last year he wondered aloud if he ever be the same physically and said he felt like he was running in sand. I know he's posting training picks but what is he saying to the team about how he's feeling? First off, the training picks are great and all that, but they mean practically nothing in the grand scheme of things because just about every NFL player works out this time of year. It's just that some don't post their workouts on social media. As for Tua's health, he was very consistent last year in saying that he was fine physically but that he also didn't think he'd ever be back to his pre-injury form. Two other points that need to be made. First, Brian Flores said publicly in October that he wasn't ready to make the change because he wanted Tua to be fully ready before putting him because he wanted Tua to be fully ready before putting him in a game. Second, did anybody really any sign of a quarterback who wasn't healthy last year? I didn't see that at any point. On the contrary, his scrambling against Arizona sure didn't look like it would come from somebody who was dealing with an injury. The health issue is not a factor, from where I sit. 2. What's the best draft scenario for Tua's development? Top OL and top RB for dominant running game or Pitts, Chase, Smith, then RB? Interesting question. Can I answer, yes? No? Okay. I'd say a dominant running game probably would be the best case scenario but I'm not sure that can be accomplished through one draft. That's a pipe dream. Besides, outside of Baltimore and Tennessee, how many teams truly have dominant running games? And Baltimore's running game is dominant in large part because of what Lamar Jackson does. So that's a tall order, and the only way to get offensive linemen at 6 and Najee Harris at 18, and I'm not so sure that's the best course of action. 3. What type or level of progress should we expect from Tua this year? That's the $64,000 question, now, isn't it? And it's probably the most important question when it comes to what kind of success the Dolphins can have in 2021. Going from year one to year two, one absolutely should expect some level of progress from Tua. On one hand, he figures to have better talent around him on offense, but on the other he might not have as much help from the defense in terms of the turnovers created. Based on what I saw last year, my best guess, if I could do better than a best guess, I'd go bet money on it, is that there will a modest level of progress. 4. What second-year player takes the biggest jump in 2021? This isn't a Tua question, per se, but my esteemed peer from the South Florida Sun Sentinel is a big believer in Tua and I'm thinking Tua is the answer he wants Tua and I'm thinking Tua is the answer he wants from me here. And given that Tua is the starting quarterback, he certainly will have the best opportunity to take a big jump in his second season. 
but I don't quite share the same confidence that many Dolphins writers have that Tua is a slam dunk to become a star in the NFL, so I'll go in a different direction here. Based on what I saw last year, the one player who quickly comes to mind for me is Robert Hunt. I saw glimpses last year of a player who absolutely could become a dominant right tackle. I'd go as far as to say he probably was the only Dolphins rookie in 2020 who gave me that feeling. 5. What's your projection for Tua assuming he's fully healthy and plays 14 to 16 games? What's his biggest area of improvement? The biggest area of improvement absolutely has to be the willingness to throw 50 to 50 passes to give his receivers the chance to make contested catches. Tua himself admitted last year he didn't like doing that and that limited what he could do that and that limited what he could do in the passing game. He'll need to become more aggressive and become more willing to take chances if he's going to take that next step. As for a projection, I'm still not ready to go with big numbers yet, regardless of who the Dolphins get in the draft, so let's say 3,200 passing yards, 20 touchdowns, 9 or 10 picks. As with any prediction, I'm only doing it because you asked. If I knew what was going to happen, I'd go put money on it. So, have you Miami Dolphins and the return of Preston William. The last time we saw wide receiver Preston Williams in 2020, the wide receiver was logging a key score against the Arizona Cardinals midway through the season. But Williams's season ended on that very play and, for the second consecutive season, the Dolphins were forced to forge on for the second half of the year without one of their top pass catchers. Williams has shown plenty of promise, but as the saying goes, your best ability is availability. And in that scope, the outlook for Preston Williams and a future with the Miami Dolphins is somewhat murky, particularly with the team looking to upgrade the pass-catching group in 2021. But despite Williams's absence for the second half of the season, it was teased throughout much of December that Williams may or may not be returning to action. And now, thanks to some insight from the Miami Herald's Barry Jackson, we know why it was teased each week during head coach Brian Flores' press availabilities that Williams may not be finished when, in finished when in reality he was bound to be done for the year. Gamesmanship. According to Jackson, a Dolphins source suggested that Miami hoped to force opposing teams to invest to extra time into their game planning each week into the possibility that Williams may finally return from his ailing foot injury. It's quite the clever ploy for Miami and, credit to Brian Flores, it was sold fairly convincingly. And as Miami's wide receiver situation turned more and more dire during the 2020 season, it became even more believable that Miami may push Williams back from injury. With the gift on hindsight, we know now that Williams actually had a surgical procedure for his foot injury back in November. But that procedure wasn't reported until three weeks after the end of the season. Kudos to Miami for keeping the situation tight-lipped and not leaking into the public. Although Miami's success there does beg to question how some of the other major bits of news regarding the team, mainly the quarterback decision at the season midpoint, and at the season midpoint, was able to be broken by outside sources throughout the year if they were so successful keeping the Williams situation under wraps. And, do you think Preston William come back in 2021 season?